For how long you have decided to keep things hidden from us? Yun Han snapped towards him, then the air in her lungs knocked out. What are you talking about? This. His hand raised in the air, holding the test. Her gaze shifted from test to Yoongi and she never saw him this serious before. The look on his face, he was demanding answers. She tried to form words but she had not even decided what she would tell them. Yoongi, I... Yoongi interrupted. It will be better for you if you tell me the truth. He looked at her sternly, waiting for an explanation. He took a deep breath and began to share all the things knowing there is no escape now, but of course excluding some of the more intimate details. Yoongi listened so... Yoon Gi listened quietly. When Yoon finished, he sighed, and you decided to hide it. I don't exactly decide. I planned on to tell them when the time is right. You can't keep something like this hidden forever. Mom and Dan deserve to know. But if something goes wrong and they find out late? Although his tone was angry, deep inside, Yoon Gi was concerned. He didn't show the concern outright, choosing to maintain a stern exterior. His older brother was now showing, and Yoon felt for the first time lost and worried in front of her own brother. I'm just not ready to tell. And what about the father? Is he going to be involved? And you going to raise the child together? Or does he even know about all this? He knows and I... I don't know yet. We are still figuring things out. It's not that simple, Yungi. She said nervously swinging her legs back and forth on the edge of the bed. It's not that simple. You do you think it's a joke? You are hiding something this from... You are hiding this big something from us taking decision that you want to. And you didn't even... Tell all the things to us. Lower your voice, Yungi. Yungi sighed. He knows he shouldn't be angry, but looking at his younger sister face, when her days to study and enjoy her life, she is thrust into a situation like this. But mom and dad need to know. They will find out sooner or later, and it's better they hear it from you. Yun pouted, not liking the lecture. Can't you keep this between us for now? I'm still struggling things out. I will tell them when I'm ready. Fine, I'll keep my mouth shut for now, but won't for so long. What can I expect from this grumpy uncle? She murmured under her breath and Yungi raised his eyebrow. What did you say? Nothing, my sweet brother. Good night. Hmm? She blinked her eyes innocently and Yungi rolled his eyes and walked out of her room. Yun let out a breath and didn't realize she was holding. And I thought I could handle all this. This is going to be so difficult. She mumbled, falling back on her back and sighing, closing her eyes. You look tense, everything all right? He asked concerned when he saw you lost in thoughts. You look up ready to respond when Jimin beat her to it. Which one? Past or present tense? Jimin said, showing his perfect teeth and Tehang and both Tehang and Yun both rolled their eyes. Your humor matches with ancient history, Jimin, outed and un- irrelevant. Jimin crossed his arms. You are just jealous and not everyone can have brain like me, sexy. How do you even tolerate this little shit? He pointed towards Yun and Jimin eyes at him. Yun, defend me. I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood. She shot peace sign and placed her head back on the table and Jimin gasped. You, how can you? He dramatically pointed his fingers at Yun. I'm hurt, deeply hurt. See, even she is tired of your outdated humor. Excuse me, Mr. Extra Garbage. You need to stop trying to steal my best friend. Then she be said, no, uh, I'm not trying to do anything like that. Just being nice. Jimin rolled his eyes and... From the time the boss sat together, they continued to be well. It was clear they were not ready to get along. You didn't tell him to shut up. No, you didn't tell him to go away. Can you both stop acting like nursery girls and get along already? They both exchanged glances, both pointing fingers to kill Sungi at each other. He started first. She crawled. She was already tense and now their bickering was not helping. She felt a tap on her shoulder ready to unleash whoever it was. To her surprise, it was Jungkook. Your class is finally over. Yeah, just got free. I was looking for you. Then came here to check, he said and observed her tired expression, noticing the bag under her eyes, subtract tension in her brows, he sensed that something was bothering her. He glanced at Jimin and Tehyung who were still engrossed in their argument over the food in front of them. Come with me. Yun nodded without question, grabbing her bag. They both made their way out of the cafeteria. Everything was alright everything's alright. Yun looked at him and then nodded. Yeah. Then you didn't get enough sleep. Yun sighed, recalling how she struggled to get enough sleep last night, with her brother, with her brother finding out. Junker, yeah. She hesitated for a moment before asking, "Have you figured out how you are going to tell your parents about this? You know, 
It wasn't done to which and seeing as Russian he sighed. Well, I have not really figured out to how to tell them. I mean, my mom might be okay, but my dad he trailed off not daring to imagine his father's reaction. The thought alone made him uneasy. He nodded his head, mind this was not easy. Why are you asking about it suddenly? But last night my brother found out. Jungkook tensed, looking at Trell little panic. How did he react? Is he mad? What did he say? He nervously fiddled with the hem of her uniform. He was shocked and well, not exactly thrilled and angry that I had it from them. So, is he going to tell your parents? He said not now, but soon. He's not wrong though. I'm worried, Jungkook. I know you both need to go through this, and this is just the first stage. Yoon girls at the thought, if her parents gave her out and everyone turned their back on her, the school bell rang, making both of them snap out of their thoughts. Every day about it on worries for both of them. They carried a secret, made everything feel heavy. Yoon tried to act normal, going classes, hanging out with friends, but everything passing Yoon brought her closer to the unavoidable conversation and the weight on her shoulder grew heavier. Each night, she played different scenarios in her head of how her parents will react. She can already imagine the disappointment look on their faces. Obviously, no parent will feel happy that their daughter is going to have a baby at such a young age. What bothered her the most was the judgment from others. She really hated it. Now she was going to face it all alone, where people might give her natural looks and think less of her. It was not just a worry about their parents' reaction. It was thought of how others would perceive her, the eyes of people around her, the whisper in the hallways, and the judgmental clears. All of it counted her thoughts. On the other hand, Jungle found himself thrust into the realm of her adulthood sooner than he expected. He realized he needed to find a job, take care of things because he was going to be a dad. But getting a job was hard because he was still in school, didn't have much experience. Looking for a job was tough, especially with this school taking up so much time. Graduating and finding a job felt far away, he needed money now. Jungle did not have much work experience, so this option was limited. Finally, after searching a lot, he got a job at a convenience store. The pay was not great, but it was a start. He worked long hours after school, which meant less time for studying or just being a regular teenager. The money he earned was not enough for all the things they needed. The challenge didn't stop there. Jungle knew he needed more money to take care of him and their child, so he kept looking for a job. Finding someone that fit into his busy schedule was hard. He knew he had to take a lot of hours because of the new responsibility. Before he used to lazy, before he used to be a lazy teenager, now he understood he couldn't be lazy anymore. Jungkook, Jungkook, yeah, he looked at the owner of the voice. Why, where are you lost? I have called you so many times. Sorry, what were you saying again? I'm going, I have an urgent call, so close the shop behind me. Oh, okay, he said as Ricky placed the keys in front of him and walked out of the shop. Jungkook said, it's already 11 p.m. and he worked close at 12. Just one more hour, after working for almost four weeks now, Ricky started to trust him. A little bit because Jungo would always be polite. The shop was open and there was few people around. Jungo efficiently handed a customer, creating a receipt, checking items, and expertly wrapping them before offering a warm smile. He eyes occasionally flicked to the computer screen, displaying footage from a different section of the store. Something caught his attention. He squinted his eyes, focusing on a figure that seems oddly familiar. With a hunch, he walked towards the section and he approached, he confirmed his suspicions. In a stood there, placing her hand on her head with a pout on her face, making her look even more adorable. A small form on Jungkook lips. It was a rare sight to see outside of the school, and though they didn't have much time to meet when she was doing fine, made him happy. Observing her from distance, he couldn't help but notice her attire. She was wearing pants and big coat, looking cozy and slightly dwarfed in the oversized clothes. Home slippers adorned her feet, and the side made him chuckle. There was an Indian charm in her small and cute wrapped up in a cot that seems a size of her too big. Jungkook heard mom at the side. He walked slowly towards her, observing her as he focused on the selecting things, placing them in the cart. Yun, he, she turned around, surprised to see him. What are you doing here? I work here. Yun was double surprised at the at the words. She was not expecting to find him at Kinwin store. Did you come here a lot? No, I came with my brother. He went out to take a call. Jungkook shut up nervously. He had not met her parents or nor any family member, yet unsure how they would perceive him. And then added few biscuits to her car. Jungkook looked around and spotted a Nutella jar. He picked it up and placed it in the car, remembering that she always had some in her school lunchbox. He looked at him with confusion. Why are you placing it in my car? It's for you. No, Jungkook, you don't need to. 
but he insisted and when small smile appeared on her lips he knew it was worth it he was earning for her and his baby anyway jago picked up a few more items and placed them in her cart is there anything specific you need i know you're hungry all the time yun slapped his arm glaring at him are you calling me fat jango chuckled oh oh your highness why would i say something like that she chuckled at his cheese nuts and and his hand soft consciously extended to her face He lightly brushed her bangs from her eyes and she paused in her place. His warm fingers contrasted with her cold face and both of their eyes locked. Jungkook smiled softly, feeling his warmth. Yoon suddenly realized how much she missed his touch. Yoon, how much time will you take? His word trailed off as he saw the scene before him. They both quickly distanced themselves. Awkwardly, oh damn, she forgets her brother was still here. Yoon looked at them. With Trey's eyebrow as he walked towards them, what is happening here? He looked at her brother who was now glaring at Jungkook. Yo, <clears throat> this is Jungkook. She cleared her throat, attempting to diffuse the tension. Jungkook gazed at and wavered from Jungkook. His his scrutiny making the letters shift uncomfortably. So you are Jungkook? Yes, that's me. He finally spoke and extended his hand towards for the shake. How do you know my sister? Yoongi knew damn well how he wanted to investigate him first. While Jungkook was thinking much better answer, how would he answer? Yo, I'm the one who got your sister pregnant. Jungkook shook his thoughts mentally and hesitated for a moment. We go to the same school. We are friends. Jungkook gripped slightly tighter his hand at the word friends, but didn't say anything. Jungkook, can you let go of his hands? You are making me uncomfortable. Jungkook released his grip and looked at his sister. Did you get what you wanted? Yeah, then hurry up. We don't have all night. As they moved towards the counter, Jungo quickly got to work wrapping the items. Did you buy the whole store? You said you needed two or three things. Jungo was about to retort when Jungo interjected, "I'm buying it for her. I mean, you don't have to worry about money." Jungo absorbed his nervous reaction and then nodded. I was not worried about that anyway. I'm second. It's good that you realize your duty now and you have responsibilities. Jungkook didn't look up at him. Wrapped the last thing in plastic and placed all of them in a paper bag before he handed it to them. Jungkook looked at it from him and walked out of there. While Jungkook looked at him, giving a reassuring nod, before he she walked out of there too. Jungkook sighed, rubbing his forehead. He felt like he committed some sin, and now it's written on his forehead. He finished his duties at up the store. As he stepped outside, he took a deep breath, realizing that every action he took now carried a different significance. The night air was cold, and he could see his breath as he sailed. He faced his life as easy as he watched fairy tales in the jungle. Yoon rushed to the bathroom, her hand clutching her stomach, and she vomited the content of her stomach near the toilet. She felt weak, the whole adrenal draining her energy. She just had dinner a few moments ago, and now it's all being flushed away. Are you sure you are okay? Yoon raised her mouth and wiped her face with a towel before responding, "I'm fine. I guess I shouldn't have overeaten." She knew very well that it was not due to overeating. However, she didn't want her mom to get suspicious, so she lied again. 
I guess now you should go to the doctor and get a checkup. I have seen your mom eating these days a lot. She nervously hanged the tower and turns other side. There's nothing wrong. She said without making eye contact. You know, if she did, she would go out in a minute. I'll make you some. I will make some tea for you. It might suit your stomach. She nodded her head and simply followed her out of the room and to the kitchen. We moved to the table, picking up the utensils. Is everything all right? His stomach upset. Her dad noted concerned edge across his face. However, when her eyes fell on her brother, he was looking at her with a raised eyebrow, gesturing her to tell them. Min shook her head, signaling her brother not to reveal anything. If this continues, we should take you to the doctor. She said to her daughter, and she nervously nodded her head, praying she just get safe this time too. However, she knows she can't lie for too long. Are you going to tell them, or should I start the conversation? Yungi asked was fixed from Yuna, who was just sat. After the dinner, they both were standing in the kitchen. Yungi, please don't force me. You know why I'm saying this. You need someone who understands all this. You can't keep going on like this, knowing nothing. Look at them. They look so tension free, enjoying the show. She gestured toward them, who was in gossip and watching TV. And what do you think they will say? And how certain are you not? They won't kick me out. We generally believe they will tell them. They will, that by telling them they will proudly say, "I'm so proud of you, my daughter." Youngi Shoki said he wanted someone to be there for her, guiding her, so he won't, so she won't face all the things alone. He placed his hand on her shoulder. You know what's done is done, and now you need to face it. And I'm here for you. He looked up at her older brother, finally covered in his presence. She noticed the maturity in his eyes and felt the warmth in his gaze. I don't even know how to bring it up. And what if, and what if it doesn't go well? Just talk to them. I won't tell how you how everything would go, but you need to try to find it out, right? Tomorrow, I promise I will tell them. Yun was crouched in the corner of her bed, tears streaming down her face. The sharp pain in her abdomen felt as if one as someone was stabbing her. She buried her face in her hands, trying to steal her cries. The stabbing sensation intensified, making it difficult for her to move. She remained crouched, hoping the pain would subside, but she thought in her mind. What if something was wrong with the baby? What if she was going to lose it? She don't know what was causing the pain. You wake up. You are going to be late for school. Her words trail off as she halted, noticing her daughter crouched and crying in pain. She rushed towards her, sitting down beside her. You know what's happening? Are you okay? What are you crying for? Her mother gently tried to comfort her, but couldn't explain the pain she was feeling. She continued to cry. Yungi, Yungi, come quickly! She called his son, who was ready to walk out of the house for his university too. Hearing her mother panic, Vasily rushed to her room. What happened? You know, you get something wrong. Choose in pain and won't tell me anything. A sudden realization hit Yungi. He was quick to scoop her sister in his arm and rushed to the, rushed out of the room. He looked at his sister's face and now she was in pain. Where is it hurting? Abdomen felt like something. Felt like something stabbing me. She said in a broken voice. Okay, we are getting you to the hospital. I hope it's nothing serious. You give my baby. I know. Just calm down. Nothing will happen to you or the baby. He was quick to reassure her, so he immediately rushed her to the hospital. Yun's hands were clammy and her heart pounding in her chest as she faced her parents. The room was heavy with tension, and her mother was angry, damn angry. Her father was calm by nature, said 
a quiet observation waiting for a storm to unfold. Explain yourself, how did this happen? Do you even realize how difficult it will be? Her mother stone was cut through the air and fell like a sharp knife and her disappointed e got in every syllable. Yun felt a lump in her throat. I didn't plan for this. It just happened. I didn't mean to. Didn't plan. Do you understand the responsibilities that come with this? Your child, yourself. Let her explain, dear. Explain what? That she's thrown her life away? What about her education and future? She's pregnant at 17. How do you expect me to understand this? Mom, I'm not throwing my life away. I'll find a way to make it work. I promise. Promise won't pay bills or provide a stable future for that child. Calm down. Let's discuss this rationally. How can you be rational about this? Our daughter is going to be a mother. Mom, yelling won't change the situation. Let's listen to what she has to say. And listening won't change the fact that she made a terrible mistake. The disappointment in the mother's eyes made her heart shatter. And she called back her tears. Honey, calm down. And you need to go to your room. You just came back from the hospital and dressed a little. We'll talk about it later. You nodded and, and ran back to her room. Yungi looked at her figure with sad eyes. He already expected this kind of reaction, but this needed to be done. What happened? I have been trying to reach you all day. Why are you here, Zinko? I was worried you were not answering and I needed to make sure you were okay. But you shouldn't be here, my parents. No one gonna know. Why? And why are you crying? He noticed the wetness around her lashes and she shook her head, immediately denying it. But he looked at her. Seriously, you know you are bad at lying. Now tell me what happened. He stared at him in silence for a moment and then suddenly he hugged and then suddenly she hugged him, making a stiffen in his place. She felt her tears damping his shirt. He hesitated, unsure he wanted to wrap his arm around her. Then he realized it's been weeks since he held her like this, but eventually he wrapped his arm around her, wanted to ask what happened. You know you can share it with me. She spoke so softly that he wanted nothing more than to stay in his arms forever. She felt safe home and didn't want to let go. When she didn't speak, he let her cry, rubbing her back gently. He may not have known how to console someone perfectly, but he was willing to do anything he could. He understood the pain of not having someone to share a problem with, so he let her cry until she was ready to tell him what happened. They know, she mumbled in his chest, and his grip tightened around her. Did they? What did they say? Mom disappointed. And your dad? He didn't say anything, except that they will talk about it later. They are so disappointed. Your parents are asleep, at least. At least your parents care about you. There is that. There is direction as well. I don't know. Things will be alright at the end. I'm here for you, Yun. No matter what, we will go through this. 
Despite feeling afraid and nervous himself, he found words for comforting her. He was too young, unsure of many things, but in the moment, he didn't want to let go of anything. He wanted to be there for her, offering whatever support he could. They wrap around each other arms, comforting solid. She realized where there is a unique comfort in his presence, and she didn't, couldn't find anywhere else. Perhaps she was starting to fall in love with him.